Hi, hello, welcome to Math at a Go. Here we are today on the first day of our 18 day action plan. On this day, we will deal with the first chapter real numbers because this chapter, the real numbers, involves so many topics and there is a need for explaining a little better. We wish to take three sessions of this chapter, each session lasting for about 15 to 20 minutes. So kindly go through all the three sessions before attempting your examination. In the first session, we will be dealing with half of the chapter. In the second session, the remaining part of the chapter. And finally, in the third session, we will deal with some important questions which will be explained and thereon you will have an exam to attempt. Thank you. Let us see what all we have in this first chapter and how to prepare this. Some key points we will note and then we will have a list of questions discussed, the methods of solving them and then you can follow the link to attempt your question paper and there are check your answers. If you have any doubts, you can post in the comment section. Thank you. Now, what do we have in this chapter? The first part deals with Euclid's division lemma or Euclid's division algorithm. It is actually lemma when we use it for proving something, the steps followed are called algorithm. So don't get confused, it's all the same. You must be able to understand the lemma and apply the lemma. Then it's all done. Let us see how we can do it. This Euclid division lemma says, for a given pair of positive integers a and b, there exists unique pair of integers q and r satisfying a is equal to bq plus r, where r is greater than or equal to 0 and less than b. This is very very important. This says about a is equal to bq plus r. This we must know if asked to write. Next, we must be able to give an example. For example, 11 is equal to 3 into 3 plus 2. This is an example. Then, if someday if something is given like a is equal to 2p plus 1, you must be able to understand that this number, the positive integer a, is divided by 2 and the quotient is p and the remainder is 1. This you must be able to understand. If you compare it with this one, here a is equal to a and b is equal to 2. And one more thing is, depending on the value of b, for example, if it is b is equal to 5, there arise 5 cases. Take any number, if you divide it, you may either get 0 as remainder or 1 as remainder or 2 or 3 or 4 as remainder. So, because we don't know that number which we have chosen, we also don't know which remainder we get. So, we have to deal with all the five cases when you are taking a number and proving something about that. For example, if you have to prove the square of something is so and so, you have to imagine that number is a positive integer a and that when divided by 5 may give you 5 remainders which means there arise 5 cases. That means that number may be any of those 5. So you have to take the 5 cases and move ahead. This is one important aspect. Secondly, HCF using EDL. EDL, whenever we say it is Euclid's division lemma, please try to understand. So, whenever we are using Euclid's division lemma to find HCF, we continue the procedure like this. For example, if you have to find out the HCF of 60 and 45, let us take. So, we will apply Euclid's division lemma on them. So, 60 is equal to 45 into 1 plus 15. Then, if this is 0, this is said to be the HCF actually. Since this is not 0, we will continue to apply Euclid's division lemma on these two again. So, this comes here. So, 45 is equal to 15 into 15 3s are so 15 into 3 nothing remains so 0 since remainder r is 0 so this becomes the hcf when r is equal to 0 so like this 
we will go on applying euclid's division lemma until we get zero as remainder this is how we find hcf through edl so we also have some proofs using euclid's division lemma for example you may be asked to find out that the square of every number is either 3m plus 1 or 3m plus 3 or something like that that proofs we have to prove for that we will take the questions and then go into the details next we have another theorem called fundamental theorem of arithmetic this is fundamental what does fundamental theorem of arithmetic say it says every composite number can be expressed as a product of primes uniquely their order may change but the primes are fixed for any composite number this is very very important aspect of this one so for this you should know how to prime factorize what is a composite number what is a prime number let us see if you take a number and divide it by any number let us say 5 and if the remainder is 0 we say it is completely divisible and when it is completely divisible we say 5 is the factor of that given number so if you are dividing it with 10 for example and even in that case if the remainder happens to be zero then 10 also is a factor of the given number that means the divisors which divide completely are called the factors and how many factors can a number have let us see leaving one aside every number should have minimum of two divisors that means minimum every number must be divisible by two numbers what are those two numbers one and itself one i itself for example if you take 7 7 is divisible by 1 as well as 7 take any number one divides every number so one is the divisor of every number and every number divides itself so one and itself are the minimum number of factors a number can have and if there are only two factors like this and no other factors are possible that means except one and itself if no number can divide a number then that number is called a prime number for example 7 is divisible by only 1 and 7 and no other number can divide it 13 can be divisible only by 1 and 13 and no other number can divide it so 7 and 13 are prime numbers there are some other numbers which are divisible by one and itself as well as some other numbers for example if you take 8 8 is divisible by 1 as well as 8 and also by 2 to fours are as well as by 4 4 twos are like this besides this one and itself there are some more numbers to divide it some other factors so this kind of numbers which have more than two factors are called composite numbers what about one one has only one factor that is one and itself is also the one so we don't say two factors are there one is the only factor so had it had two factors we would have considered it to be prime number had it had more factors we would have considered it to be a composite number it doesn't satisfy any of these so one is kept aside it is neither prime nor composite and speaking of these prime numbers except two all the prime numbers are odd numbers only two is the even number what are even numbers those numbers which are completely divisible by two or even numbers those numbers which give one as remainder when divided by two are odd numbers so once you know prime numbers and composite numbers this will be clear to you the fundamental theorem of arithmetic so you should also know the prime numbers up to 100 that is the minimum so these are the prime numbers up to 100 you should know minimum of these so prime numbers up to 50 and prime numbers up to 100 so we can say there are 25 prime numbers up to 100 this is very very important so what is this prime factorization we will make use of these numbers and go on splitting it let us see an example if we have to prime factor is 100 2 5 10 0 2 2 is 
five five six like this. You go on doing it, taking only prime numbers, and finally to end by prime number. This type of division is called prime factorization. Now hundred can be written as hundred is equal to two into two into five into five, which means two to the power of two into five to the power of two. So what this says is. No matter who factorizes hundred, they will only get this two twos and two fives. This is what it says. So somebody may do it by beginning with five first. So it may go like this. So five twos are zero, five fours are two twos are. So apart from the order, they say. So order may be different. Every composite number can be factorized into its prime factors uniquely apart from the order in which they occur. So this is what it says. So here two have come first, and here five have come first. So even then, if you carefully observe, the fives are two, and the twos are two. Twos are two, fives are two. So they remain unique, but the order might change. Order is not important. This is what. Prime factorization says through a number of prime factorizations, people have understood one thing: when they prime factorized hundred, when they prime factorized twenty, when they prime factorized fifty, when they prime factorized seventy, they concluded one thing: in every one of these, there was one two and one five. So whenever there was one two and one five, two fives are ten. That means this can be written as ten into one. This can be written as ten into two. This can be written as ten into five. This can be written as ten into seven. So every of one of these has ten in it, and hence the zero here. And this ten can be split into two into five. So from this, they have concluded one thing: when a number is prime factorized, and among its prime factors, if there is one, two, and its pair five as part of that. Prime factorization, that number definitely ends in zero. If there is one pair, it ends in one zero. There are two pairs. For example, two into five, and again one more two into five. For example, here, here let us see. Here, if you write it as two five, so two into five one pair, two into five another pair. So it has two pairs, so it has two zeros. This is an important conclusion. So depending on this. we can decide how many zeros a number can have in its ending now finding lcm and hcf using prime factorization as discussed lcm and hcf can be found in three ways now we are finding it using prime factorization hcf we found using edl earlier so in the exam you may be asked by any method so please learn both so lcm and hcf using prime factorization For example, he may ask you like this: sixty and forty-five. You have to prime factorize both of them. So sixty can be prime factorized as two into three into two into five. Two to the six to the twelve five is sixty. That means two to the power of two into three to the power of one into five to the power of one. We have to write it as the product of prime factors. That is the product of the powers. So forty-five can be written as three into three into five. So this can be written as three to the power of two into five to the power of one. Now, how to find LCM? Let us see. Here there are three stages that could be asked for you to find out HCF for LCM. They may give you sixty and forty-five and ask you to find LCM or HCF directly, or he may give you like this. Find the LCM of two into three into two into five and three into three into five, or he may ask you to find the LCM of two square into three to the power of one into five to the power of one and three square into five to the power of one. No matter how he asked, the question means only to find the HCF of these two or LCM of these two, and the method changes. If it is given here, you have to follow all these steps. If it is given like this. You will follow steps from here onwards. If it is given here itself, you will follow the next steps. So, if it is asked like this, maybe it may be given in the bits. If it is given 
it may also be given in the bits to test you whether you know it or not or it may be given for one mark or two marks like this so it depends on the time and the space and the place so let us see how to find out there are two definitions for lcm and hcm what is lcm lcm is the product of greatest powers of each of the prime factors of the two numbers or the three numbers it might be confusing let me tell you very clearly if they are given like this 2 to the power of 2 into 3 to the power of 1 into 5 to the power of 1 next one also you take 3 to the power of 2 write it under 3 only and 5 to the power of 1 under 5 and if i say though this is not the actual method just for your clarity i'm just asking you to write whatever is not given with the power using zero so now LCM though it is least LCM least we have to take the highest please remember so highest of these two is this one highest of these two is this one highest of these two both are same you can take any of them now take them all the selected ones and find their product so 2 to the power of 2 into 3 to the power of 2 into 5 to the power of 1 find their result 2 to the power of 2 is 4 3 to the power of 2 is 9 into 5 so 4 nines are 36 that six fives are 180 so the lcm of these two is 180 this is the method but before this actually you have to write the definition of lcm what is lcm it is the product of the greatest powers of all the prime factors of the given numbers so you will take them and select the highest ones and their product is considered as lcm then what about hcf simple it is the product of the least powers of common prime factors of the given numbers. The additional word common is used in HCF but all is used in LCM. So please keep it in mind. And coming to our technique, what shall we do here? We are taking the highest powers. In HCF, though the name is highest, you will take the least of the powers. So, of them the least is 2 to the power of 0. So, that means you don't write because it is 1. It was actually not there, so you don't write it. Only it is for our understanding. Now, of these the least is this one. So, 3 to the power of 1. And of these the least is any of them. Now, what can you write? 3 into 5 is 15. So, HCF is 15. HCF for 60 and 45 is 15. LCM of 60 and 45 is 180. No matter whether you start it here or from here or from there, this is the method. Now, what is HCF? Please remember, HCF can divide both of them. And both of them can divide LCM. Please remember, HCF can divide both of them. They both can divide LCM. That means, HCF can also divide this one. The arrow mark goes like this. Please remember. HCF can divide this one, this can divide this one, this can also divide this one. Everybody gets confused. What divides what? Please remember. Hyderabad, Nagpur, your lucky place, luck. Now, please have an arrow like this. H divides N, N divides L, H also divides L, and reverse they don't happen. Let us see. That means HCF divides all the numbers. N means numbers. All the numbers divide in CM. Divide in the sense giving zero as remainder. When HCF divides these numbers, the remainder will be zero. When these numbers divide the LCM, then also the remainder will be zero. And when HCF divides LCM, then also the remainder will be zero. People get confused whether that these divide this or this divide that. This is simple clarity. And we also have one relationship between these two. If A and B are two numbers, their product A into B is equal to the product of L into G or H. G in the sense G, C, D, other name for HCF. So A into B is equal to L into G. This could also be sometimes useful. So please remember. Look at it.